So we're going to go over section uh, 12.1 that has to do with exponents. So let's just do a quick review. Uh, let's consider the symbol b to the nth. So b, this here, is called the base. And up here in superscript is called the exponent. It's also called the power. And this is just shorthand for taking the base B and multiplying it by itself the number of times indicated by the exponent, in this case, in times. So, for example, 3 to the second power is equal to, by definition, the base is equal to 3, and the exponent, which I'm just going to abbreviate with exp is equal to 2. So I take the base and multiply itself by itself twice and I get the answer 9. 2 to the third again the base in this case is 2 and the exponent is 3. At the very very beginning of this we're actually going to practice writing down the base and the exponent each time. That's the reason I'm doing that. So this is 2, and I multiply it by itself three times. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. Now on the other hand, minus 3 to the third. Notice that in PEMDAS, that's what's ruling the nest here, we do parentheses first, but there are no parentheses. But the second, the E stands for exponents. And this is a negation sign right there, which means take the opposite of the number that follows. So really, the number that follows is 3 to the third. So that's <coughs> 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 27, and it's negated. Let me actually put it in there. I added <coughs> the negation symbol at the end, but I should have put it right in there at the very beginning from the start, just to make sure I realize that whatever I get, minus 3, times 3 times 3 is negated. So <clears throat> again, let's look at this one more time. Minus 3 cubed. The base is equal to 3. And the exponent is also equal to 3 in this case. And <clears throat> hence, I negate this number. So I hope your next question is, what do I do about having negative bases? How would I actually denote a negative base to a power? Well, you would actually put minus 3 in parentheses and then raise that to the power 3. So here, notice, the base is equal to minus 3, and the exponent is 3, so this is equivalent to minus 3 times minus 3 times minus 3. So minus 3 times minus 3 is 9, because negative times negative is a positive. Then I'm going to multiply that by minus 3, so that's going to give me minus 27. 
So those are some things to keep in mind, especially when we go about our first part. Let me talk about two other things really fast. Talking about exponents. Um, some of you may already know that, but I, what I'm about ready to tell you, but I can't necessarily assume it. So when our exponent is two, so we have special names And these names have, you know, reasons behind them that go back thousands of years. Special names for the exponents two and three. So, for example, if we have x raised to the second power, I will almost always say x squared. Or if I have x raised to the third power, I will almost always say x cubed. So where do these words square and cubed come from? Well, they've literally been in the mathematical literature for quite some time. Starting with the Greeks, they literally did not deal with length as much as they did area. And the area of a square has length and width the same. And the area of the square, think about having a square wall and trying to find out how much paint you need to paint the entire wall. So the area is equal to W times W, which is another way of saying W to the second power. So that is the reason we say squared, because this deals with the area of a square. On the other hand, for the cubed, we have a very similar notion. So if we have basically think about a fish tank or something like that similar. Think of a cube, think of a dice. Now here we're not talking about surface area. In other words if you just wanted to paint the outside of a solid cube that would be surface area. Instead, we're thinking about a quantity that we get when we fill it full of water. So suppose it's an aquarium and you want to fill it completely full of water. Well, that's a volume measurement. And the volume is equal to, remember, each one of these faces is a square, so it's my length times my width times my height. Since it's a square, they're all the same. So that's L times L times L, which is another word saying L to the third power. And we say cubed because to the third power originally many times represented the volume of a cube. So, so there you have the, the history to the best of my knowledge on why we say squared when we're dealing with an exponent of 2 and cubed dealing with an exponent of 3. So for now, well, our first exercise is going to be 1a and we're just going to be dealing with evaluating exponents. So when we evaluate an exponent, we're actually finding the number uh, that is the result of multiplying the base time the number of times is indicated by the exponent. So on 1a we have 3 cubed. So again let's I'm going to write over here the base is equal to 3 and my exponent is also equal to 3. So this is just equivalent to 3 
times 3 times 3, which we already saw was equal to 27. Now let's do 1B. Here I have minus 7 squared. In this case, my base is equal to minus 7. My exponent is equal to 2. So this is equal to minus 7 times minus 7. Minus times a minus is a plus. 7 times 7 is 49. 1c is minus 6 squared. Our base here is equal to 6. And our exponent is equal to 2. So this is equal to minus 6 times 6, which is equal to minus 36. And the last thing we're asked to do for 1D is to evaluate minus 4Y squared when y is equal to minus 5. Well, literally what I do is I come back over here and I replace y with minus 5. And y is my base. So minus 5 is my base when y is equal to minus 5. And that's squared. So this is equal to minus 4 times minus 5 times minus 5 because y is my base and that is the value of y that was given us so this is minus 4 minus 5 times minus 5 is 25 so this is the same as minus 4 times 25 which is minus 100 so now we have to get some new rules to manipulate exponents when the base is not known. So what I've done is on your site, let me log into your site really fast. Add block, are you kidding me? Why is that even there? Uh, we're going to go to your site. And let's scroll down. Close up that. And we are on week four assignments. And of course, here's your homework assignments. And I've already uploaded uh, the video lecture for section 10.5. And underneath of it, I have placed an attachment or a file that you can upload. It's called Exponent in Scientific Notation. And this is the contents <coughs> of that document. So here we have a lot of rules for manipulating exponents. Now the scientific notation we won't do in this lecture but I included the basic definition at the end so you can kind of use this to be your cheat sheet. So the first one is called the product rule for exponents. So let m and n be positive integers. Those are just whole numbers greater than zero. And let b be any real number. Then b raised to the nth power times b raised to the nth power is equal to b raised to the m plus n power. Now here's a specific example. Notice I, I present these rules to you in a different way if you're reading your textbook than the textbook does. I group them into exponent rules involving the same base but different exponents. Now here our exponents are m and n, but it could be that m is equal to n. 
but not necessarily. So that's not excluded. So here's an example of the use of the product rule for exponents. 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 9th. Notice the bases are the same. There are 3 in each case. Well, that's equal to 3 raised to the power of 5 plus 9. So the end, end result is 3 to the 14th power. And we don't want to calculate that. That's a really large number. All we care about right now is that you use the, the rules. So let's give some ju justification for this rule. So let's just look at something like 2 to the third times 2 to the fifth. Well, by definition, 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. You'll see why I wrote down 3 times 2. And we do it, that multiplication, 3 times. 2 to the fifth, by definition, is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we multiply 2 by itself 5 times. So the total number of times 2 is multiplied by itself is 3 plus 5 times. So 2 multiplied by itself 3 plus 5 times is equal to 2 to the eighth. So you can see here how the rule for the product rule for exponents was derived. So we're going to use that rule right now. Now I give these uh, in a different order than they're presented to you. For example, you're not going to get the quotient rule for exponents until I, we get to the next page. But again, notice that the bases are the same. So it's easier, I think, for students to concentrate on rules that you have to use them. The base B has to be the same versus other rules, which we'll look at momentarily, when the bases can be different or we don't have a single base, like A times B raised to the nth. Well, that's A to the nth times B to the nth or a divided by b raised to the nth, etc. And uh, we'll look at the rest of these when it's time. So right now, if you've not actually downloaded this sheet, you might want to pause the video right now, log into Canvas, and download it. I just uploaded it today. I modified it from another handout I used to give this class, and I made, made it very, very similar in wording and in examples for what you have in the accompanying e-textbook. So that said, let's use the product rule to simplify each of these expressions. Wrong thing. There we go. So let's do 2a. So we have x to the fifth times <laughs> x to the third. Well, our base over here, our base, bases, are both equal to x. So that's a rule that I can use the product rule for exponents. So I just add the exponent 5 and 3. So that becomes x to the 8th power. For 2b, I have 4z cubed times 9z to the 5th. 
So what we do here is we use all of what we used before. This is literally just multiplication. 4 times z cubed times 9 times z to the fifth. So with multiplication, the order in which I multiply things does not matter. So I'm going to put my coefficients, my constant terms, 4 and 9, at the very first. And then I'm going to group together z, the z terms. And now I can apply the product rule for exponents here. And this is just basic multiplication. 4 times 9 is 36. And my bases are the same, so I just add the exponents. So the final answer is 36 times z to the eighth. Let's do number 2c. It's more of the same, minus 3x cubed y squared times minus 5x to the fourth y to the sixth. Well, again, I collect like terms in a sense. A minus 3 times the minus 5 comes out at the first. Then I put my x terms side by side. x to the third times x to the fourth. Then I group together my y terms. y squared times y to the sixth. So now I can use the product rule for exponents on this factor and this factor. So minus 3 times minus 5 is plus 15 x to the third times x to the fourth is x to the three plus four. y squared times y to the six is y to the two plus six. Just be aware that these are expressions in the exponent, in the superscript. So simplifying, that's 15 x, three plus four is seven, and y to the 2 plus 6 is 8. Okay, let's do the last one. You all should pause right now and try to attempt number 2 D on your own. Okay, so we have 9ab squared c to the fourth times minus 11a cubed b times minus 2b squared c to the fifth. Well, again, I'm going to bring together all of the constant terms out front. 9 times minus 11 times minus 2. Then I'm going to group together any a terms I have. So that's a times a cubed. That a there and this a cubed here. Now I'm going to start with the b terms, b factors. That's a b squared times a b. And there is also a b squared here. And I'm going to do the c factors. c to the fourth from right there times there are no c factors here and c to the fifth here. So let's see if we got them all. There's my a, a cubed, that's all my a's, b squared, b, b squared, c to the fourth, c to the fifth. So 9 times 
minus 11 is minus 99. And minus 99 times minus 2 is equal to 198. Here our bases are the same, so I just apply the product rule for exponents. Now when I don't have an exponent, if it's just plain a, that's a to the first power. So a to the first power is equal to a. So I can add exponents a to the 1 plus 3 power, which is a to the 4th power. b, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, so it's b to the 5th power. And c, 4 plus 5 is to the 9th power. So that should be our answer for 2d. Okay, so now we got to look at another rule. It's called the power rule. Again, these are in different order than your, the way I've listed them here, are in a different order than what you're given in the book. But trust me, you'll have to know all of them. So this says, suppose I actually have an exponent whose base is actually a number raised to an exponent. So here in this expression, let me get some help here. I have a base that is itself a number raised to an exponent. And then I raise that number to the nth power. So the rule says, well, you take the n and you multiply it by the m. So let's look at the example I gave you. So 2 squared, and that is my new base that I'm going to be raising to the third power. So let's actually figure this out. Let's actually derive this rule. The rule says it should be 2 raised to the 2 times 3, which is 2 raised to the 6th power. Why? Because 2 times 3 is equal to 6. But let's start out what this means. This means I take 2 squared and I multiply it by itself 3 times. So this is, but 2 squared means 2 times 2. And how many total 2's do I have? I have 2 times 3 groupings of 2. So it's 2 to the 6th. So let's go back and look at some examples and work some problems. So we'll let's do 3, A, B, and C. So 3A, I have x to the seventh power raised to the third power. So by my rule, that's x to the 7 times 3 power, which is equal to x to the 21st power. 3b is y cubed raised to the 11th power. But my rule says that's y raised to the 3 times 11, which is y raised to the 33rd. And my last one, C, I have P to the tenth power raised to the fifth power. But by my power rule for exponents, that's P raised to the ten times five power, 
which is p to the 50th power. So those aren't so bad. Again, these just take practice. There's an awful lot of rules. So here we have another rule, the power of a product rule. So the power of a product rule says this. So if I'm giving if I'm given two numbers a times b so my base is their product so my base is equal to the product of a times b that's my base and I ra raise that to an exponent n. That's the same as taking the first factor in my product a and raising it to the nth power and then multiplying it by the second factor in my base product b and raising it to the nth power. So let's look at an example of this. Let's look at 2 times 3 squared. I'm keeping my number small here. Well, let's figure it out one way and then figure it out using power of a product rule. 2 times 3 is equal to 6 and that's my base and it's going to be squared so that's equal to 6 times 6 which is equal to 36. But now let's use and derive that answer another way. The other way is to use power of a product rule. So I have 2 times 3 raised to the nth power. Compare that to a times b raised to the nth power. Sorry, I'm actually given a value for n up here. That is 2. Well, down here it says that's a to the n times b to the n. In this case, a would be 2 b would be 3 and n, my exponent, would be 2. So this is equal to 2 squared times 3 squared, which is equal to, well 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4, and 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9, which is 36. So we get the exact same answer either way we do it. So with that in our minds, let's go back and do some more problems using that particular rule. I've got to give you one more rule. I've got to give you the quotient rule. And they sneaked two rules in on me there. Let's look at the quotient rule. Let me see what they're giving us here. Yeah, what they're calling the quotient rule, what the book actually uses as power of a quotient rule. And that's literally what your book calls it as well, because I got these from the book. It basically says, if I have a fraction of the form A divided by B, and I raise the fraction, my base now is that fraction, and I raise that to the nth power, that's going to be equal to taking my numerator and raising it to the nth power and taking my denominator and raising it to the nth power. And here's an example. x divided by 3 is my base and I'm raising that to the second power. Well that's equal to x squared divided by 3 squared which is equal to x squared over 9. So that's power of a quotient rule. And that's the rule that we're going to be using here. I guess when they say use the power of a product or quotient rule, they mean use the power of a product or 
power of a quotient rule to simplify. They, could, they certainly could have worded that better, in particular because of the ability to confuse it, confuse it with the actual quotient rule. At any rate, we doesn't matter so much the names. I actually have my little cheat sheet of names right here myself because I never use the names. I just know what to do and sometimes I will get some of these power uh, rule names mixed up and I don't want to do that because it's important that you all at least if you want to use the name to learn it use that. So this is going to be using the power of a product rule. So my base is a product. So my base is equal to x times y. So my base is a product. So now you see why the names are descriptive. So this is <coughs> this is a product raised to the fifth power. So I'm going to use power of a product rule. So that's x, which is my first factor in my base, times y raised to the fifth. So that's not so bad. Let's look at 4b. They're doing something weird here. So we're going to combine. rules. A lot of these problems will be requiring us to combine rules. So remember PEMDAS says do what is in parentheses first and then do exponentiation. But there's nothing in these parentheses that I can simplify. There's nothing I can do. So I'm going to use the power of a product. In this case the base is the product of three factors minus 7 times a cubed times b cubed. So those are going to be the three factors that I individually raise to the power of 2. So that's minus 7, that's my base, so I have to put it in, in parentheses squared times a cubed. Each factor in the base is raised to a power, the power indicated by the outermost power. So now I can simplify using other rules that I've known. Minus 7 squared is minus 7 times minus 7, so that's 49. Now a cubed squared, well the base itself is raised to a power, so I use the power rule for exponents. So that's a to the 3 times 2. I'll actually write it there, then I'll simplify it next. And this is b cubed squared, so that's b times 3 times 2. So the final simplification is 49a. So this is, this is not minus there, it kind of looks like it maybe. That's 3 times 2. So that's 6. And b raised to the 3 times 2 which is 6. 49a to the 6th, b to the 6th. Okay. Let's do 4c. So I have in my numerator a product, a times b, in my denominator is c, and I'm raising that to the se seventh power. So the power of a quotient rule says I take my numerator, which is a times b, and that is my base, and that's raised to the seventh power. And then I raise c also to the seventh power. But this can be fully further simplified because here my base is a product. So I can use the power of a product rule to write that is a to the seventh times b to the seventh. However, c, the denominator, c to the seventh can't be further simplified. And let's do 4d. All 
I have 3x squared y to the fourth over minus 2z cubed to the second. So let's use the power of a quotient rule first. There's nothing I can do really to simplify what's in parentheses because my numerator and my denominator don't share any common factors. So using the power of a quotient rule, this is 3x squared y to the fourth raised to the second power over the denominator minus 2z cubed and that is squared. Well, I can actually simplify some more because the numerator, the base, is a product of factors. So I can use the power rule for power of a product rule for the numerator and ditto the denominator. So this is 3 squared times the next factor, which is x squared, and it's also squared times the next factor, which is y to the fourth. It's also squared <coughs> all over minus 2 in parentheses, because that's my base. It's going to be squared. Then I'm going to multiply it by my next factor, which is z cubed, and it is squared. So now let's simplify it on my next line down here. 3 cubed, sorry, 3 squared is 9. x squared squared is x to the fourth, because this is my power rule for exponents. So it's 2 times 2. Power rule for exponents, also used here. y to the fourth squared, so that's 4 times 2. That's 8. Minus 2 squared is minus 2 times minus 2, which is 4. And z cubed squared is z to the 3 times 2, which is z to the 6th. So that's my final answer. Okay, so that gets us down to 4D. We got to go to the next page. So now we are going to go and learn yet another rule. So going back to my rules, this is called not power of a quotient rule, but our quotient rule. So the quotient rule, in my view, should be presented right after our first rule, which was the product rule. But the quotient rule says, notice that the bases are the same, but the exponents can differ. If I have some number b raised to the mth power in the numerator, divided by b raised to the nth power, then the result is b raised to the m minus n. And this says let m and n be positive integers. It works for any value. It doesn't matter. They can be negative as well. Let's look at this example. x raised to the tenth power divided by x raised, raised to the third power. That's the same as x to the 10 minus 3, which is x to the seventh. So we're going to be using that rule in the next set of in the next problem. And the combination, I'm quite sure, of rules. Yeah, we will. For number C and number D, uh, we're going to just use that rule. We're going to simplify it. It's not going to be straight up. So 5a, we have x to the fifth divided by x squared. Well, let's think about this. That's an x times x 
times x times x times x divided by x times x. So I can cancel out like factors, right? So that factor cancels out, and all I have is x times x times x, which is equal to x to the third. But you can see quite readily that if I use my rule, this is equal to x to the 5 minus 2, which is equal also to x to the third. This is kind of helpful conceptually right here. As a matter of fact, if you understand conceptually what's going on in this explanation right here, you really never need to use the rule at all. Um, I never, ever, ever use this rule. I kind of know what to do because conceptually um, I understand what's going on. That said, let's go ahead. And it's absolutely fine to use the rule in every instance. That's absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, it's expected at this level. So 5b minus 6 to the 11th divided by minus 6 to the 9th. Notice our base is the same in both cases. It's minus 6. So by my quotient rule, this is my base is minus 6 raised to the 11 minus 9, which is equal to minus 6. Again, that's my base. You need to indicate it by putting it in parentheses. And 11 minus 9 is 2. So can you imagine trying to find out minus 6 to the 11th power? Some huge number. And then dividing it by minus 6 to the 9th power? Another huge number. But all you really have to do is just evaluate minus 6 squared, which is the same as minus 6 times minus 6 which is equal to 36. That's a lot easier. Computationally much faster. Less resource intensive. So 5c x to the twelfth power times y to the fifth power over x to the eighth power times y to the fourth power. And I just want to remind you this is exactly the same as x to the twelfth divided by x to the eighth times y to the fifth divided by y to the fourth. So x to the twelfth divided by x to the eighth is x to the twelve minus eight multiplied by y to, to the fifth divided by y to the fourth, which is y to the five minus four. So 12 minus eight is four. And five minus four is one. You can put a one there if you want to, but we never write it. So you might as well just get used to seeing it in this form x to the fourth y rather than x to the fourth times y to the first. Both of these two are symbolically different looking, but they mean the exact same thing. So let's do 5d. So I have 8a cubed b to the eighth, c to the third, over 18, a, b to the fifth, c squared. And if we want, I can write this out just like I did before, although you should be able to do it without doing that. This is 18, sorry, it's not 18, but rather 8 divided by 18 times 
a cubed divided by a times b to the eighth divided by b to the fifth times c to the third divided by c squared. Well, 18 divided by 8, I can divide 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 18 divided by 2 is 9, so that's 4 ninths. And a cubed divided by a is a to the 3 minus 1 power. b to the 8th divided by b to the 5th is b to the 8 minus 5th power. And c to the 3rd divided by c squared is c to the 3 minus 2. So all of this is equal to 4 ninths times, and when you write this here, if you're going to write it this way, it needs to be on the exact same line or level as the division line. So that's a, 3 minus 1 is 2, times b, 8 minus 5 is the third power, and c, 3 minus 2 is to the first power. So it's 4 ninths times a squared b cubed times c. And why did I say that? Because some students will write something that is, is really bad. 4 ninths a squared b cubed c, and sometimes they're careless and they'll bring out, if they bring out that division line too long, then that's wrong because it shows these being underneath the division line. What I actually prefer, and what you'll see mathematically written many times, is the following. 4a squared b cubed c all divided by 9. That is my preferred uh, form, but for sometimes there's so much going on for beginning students that sometimes we will write it like this here rather than this over here. But you should conceptually start tying these two symbolic expressions. They are exactly equal. Okay, so that was actually 5D. Okay, so one more rule, and this one's going to be freaky, not that one, wrong one, this one. So down here at the next page, I have a wing ding or other exponent rules. So this is called the zero exponent rule. So we say let b be any real number except zero. Then b raised to the zeroth power is equal to 1. What? And I'll give you some reasons why that is. Just remember b raised to the zeroth is not 0. As long as b is not 0, any number except 0 raised to the zeroth power is 1. You say, well, what's 0 raised to the zeroth? And the answer is it's undefined. So you now have two things that are undefined in your world. Any number divided by 0 and 0 raised to the zeroth. So as long as x is not equal to 0, 3 times x is not equal to 0. So 3 times x is some other number that's not 0, and that other number raised to the 0th power is equal to 1. Let me give you some justification. I remember being really disturbed and, and bothered by that when I was in high school math, and I didn't like to be bothered. So I'm going to give you pretty much the exact same now this isn't a proof or anything like that, but it's an, al it's an analogy. So let's look at the number 1,384. Well, that's equal to 1 times 1,000 plus 3 times 100 plus 8 times 10 plus 4 times 1. So writing 1,110 using exponents, this is the same as 1 times 10 to the third power. When the base is 10, 
and I raise it to a power, all I do is just have a 1 with three zeros. I don't add three zeros to 10. I just have one with three total zeros. 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000. But this is equal to three times 100 is three times 10 squared. And then I go, I'm adding these of course, eight times 10 is 10 to the first. So it makes sense following the pattern of decreasing exponent that four times 10 to the zeroth is the same as four times one. So whatever the case is, that's what it is by definition. So let's go back and do some examples uh, that use that. This is really a simple part. Get us some space here. So this is what problem is it? Oh, we're still on five. So this is five e. So eight to the zeroth. The base is not zero, so that's equal to one. 3 sevenths is my base, and it's raised to the zeroth power. 3 sevenths is not equal to zero, so that's equal to one. Now we're going to assume that neither x nor y is equal to zero in this case. So 5x squared times y is not equal to zero. So some number that's not equal to zero raised to the zeroth power is equal to one. This last one's kind of fun. X to the zeroth plus nine to the zeroth. And we're going to assume your book, I've not read your e-text close enough to know. These little mini lectures don't say it. They should. We should assume X is not equal to zero. Well, X to the zeroth then is equal to one. And nine clearly is not equal to zero, so nine to the zeroth power is also equal to one. So that weird looking expression right there that seems so mathematically complex is really just equal to two. Surprise. And mixed practice. Let's do these mixed practice. So I'm gonna send you a challenge right now. I want you to pause the video See if you can do A, B, C, and D. Okay, so this is number 6A. So I'm going to use the power rule for exponents. No, I'm not the power rule for power of a product rule. Why? Because my base is a product. It's the product of four different factors. One factor is eight. The next factor is a cubed. The next factor is b squared. And the next factor is c. Now if you want, we, let's go ahead and use PEMDAS full on. I can indeed simplify what's in parentheses because we're assuming none of our variables are equal to zero. So z c to the zeroth power is one. So multiplying a times eight cubed times b squared times one is the same as eight times a cubed times b squared. And that's raised to the second power. So now I'm going to use the power of a product rule. So I'm going to raise eight to the second power, then a cubed to the second power, then b squared to the second power. Eight times eight is 64. That's eight squared. A cubed squared is power rule for exponents. 
That's a to 3 times 2, not 3 plus 2, 3 times 2. b squared squared is b to the fourth. And that's the answer for 8a. So I have a fraction, or a quotient, if you want to call it that. So again, we're going to use, that's a 3, that's a terrible 3. Let me do that 3 better. Now there's different ways you can do this. But since PEMDAS exists, let's go ahead and simplify what's in parentheses. Well, I can't do anything the minus 3 halves. But x squared divided by x is x to the 2 minus 1. And then I have y to the fifth up here and just z squared down here. So literally what I did is I just kind of noted and simplified this little part right here x squared divided by x. x squared divided by x is equal to x to the 2 minus 1. If I want to make it a fraction, I can put it over to 1. So that gives me my x. And that's exactly what I'm going to write when I simplify this. Of course, all of this is still raised to the third power. So I'm going to get minus 3. x to the 2 minus 1 is just my x y to the fifth over 2z squared, all of which is raised to the third power. So now I'm going to use my power of a quotient rule. So I'm going to take my numerator, 3xy to the fifth. Now I'm going to raise it to this exponent 3. So remember the rule is a over b raised to the nth is equal to a to the nth over b to the nth. That's what I'm doing here. So 2z squared raised to the third. So now I can use power of a product rule. So this is a product of one, two, three factors. Down here it's a product of two factors. So I take my first factor, which is minus three, and I raise it to the third power. Then I take my, my next pack factor, which is x, and I raise it to the third power. And then I take my next factor, which is y to the fifth, and I raise it to the third power as well. I'm going to do the same thing down here. My first factor is 2, and I'm going to raise it to the third power. And then my next factor is z squared, and I'm going to raise it to the third power. So let's get some more room over here. So I'm going to simplify minus 3 cubed is minus 3 times minus 3, which is 9, times minus 3, which is minus 27, times x cubed, y to the fifth to the third power is y 5 times 3, 2 cubed is 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, which is 8, z squared to the third power is z to the 2 times 3 power. So the end result is minus 27 x cubed y to the 15th power divided by 8 z 
to the sixth power. Okay. Six C. Minus four A squared C cubed times minus six A cubed. This one's a piece of cake, isn't it? C to the seventh. Well, that's equal to, we're going to group together like terms. So minus four times minus six. And I'm going to group together a terms. So that's a squared times a cubed. And I'm going to group together, uh, well, there is no b term here, but there is a single b term here. So I'm going to put it there just to keep things in alphabetical order. It doesn't really matter. And then let's do our c terms. That's c cubed times c to the seventh. So minus 4 times minus 6 is plus 24. A squared times A cubed. That was our very first rule. It's the product rule for exponents. So I add the exponents here. Times B squared. C cubed times C to the seventh is 3 plus 7. So learning when to add versus when to multiply is always a problem, if there is a problem at all. So make sure you use these rules enough to familiarize yourself. So the answer to this is 24a to the fifth, b squared, c to the tenth. And 6d. This one's a good one. I actually like this one. 12 A B. Oh, let me erase this. I got too overzealous with my parentheses there. 12 times A B to the fourth power over 6 A squared b squared to the second power. So this is going to be a power of the product rule because my base is a product. The product of 12 times a times b. So that's 12 to the fourth and we're not going to multiply out 12 to the fourth. We're going to leave that till the very end. Times times a to the fourth times b to the fourth, all of which is over 6 squared times a squared squared times b squared squared. So let's simplify. 12 to the fourth, we're not going to do anything with that just yet. Now I'm going to have a to the fourth times b to the fourth, 6 squared. a squared squared is a to the fourth. b squared squared is b to the fourth. Now I know that a and b are not zero. So I don't need to do anything else but use what I already know. I can cancel out these factors, they're the exact same factor. So my answer is going to be 12 to the fourth divided by 6 squared. But we're not grabbing our calculators for this. We're going to use some other stuff. 12 is equal to 2 times 6. And 12 itself is raised to the fourth power over 6 squared. 
Well, that's equal to 2 to the fourth power times 6 to the fourth power divided by 6 squared. which is equal to 2 to the fourth. 6 to the fourth divided by 2 to the fourth. Look at your quotient rule. That's 6 to the 4 minus 2 power. So the end result is 2 to the fourth times 6 squared. Well, 2 to the fourth is 2, 4, 8, 16. And 6 squared is 36. So all we have to do is figure out what 16 times 36 is. And we'll do that right here. So 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21. 6, 3, 6, 7. And thus I did the multiplication, uh, multiplication wrong, that should be 576. Let me just double check. So 36 times 16. And it is indeed 576. Okay, so that's it for 12.1 uh, exponents. We're going to be doing more exponents. Uh, in 12.2, and then I think 12.3, we start looking at polynomials.